dear students this is again dr madhu kamra from durga mahavidyalaya with a video lecture on vowels i've already done a video on consonants so now we take up vowels and next i would be doing diphthongs with you first let us see what is the difference between vowels and consonants you know that consonants are sounds which are marked with stricture that is obstruction somewhere in the a passage and i'm also to remind you that uh, consonantal sounds or vowel sounds or diphthongal sounds any kind of sounds they are produced with the help of outcoming a stream which is called aggressive so vowels are those sounds which are completely open they are voiced and at the same time they have high level of sonority now to remind you that um, all our musical notes are extended with the help of vowel sounds for example sa when it changes into a it gets a longer version of sound and uh, you have to also keep this in mind that vowels they make the nucleus of a syllable for example if you take the word cat you find that it is the vowel which takes the sound on a higher level then it is also to be remembered that vowels are those which can appear independently this we have seen in the case of consonants also that they are dependent sounds so your vowels are independent sounds and they are also called pure vowels they are also called monophthongs and when you have two vowels juxtaposed then you have diphthongs which are also called impure vowels because they make the nucleus of a syllable students you have to remember that they carry the stress pattern the tonal pattern and uh, the uh, rhyme pattern of the sentence also now it is also to be remembered that vowels are called pure sounds they are uh, 12 in number and they are classified on three bases let us see what is the mode of classification of vowel sounds so let us see how vowels are categorized now vowels are categorized into two main categories you have diphthongs which are also called impure vowels and monophthongs which are also called pure vowels so the lesson that we are doing today is monophthongal sounds now vowel is a latin word which is derived from vocalis which means vocal now see to the classification you find that vowels are classified as per the height of the tongue part of the tongue and shape of the lips so first we take up the height of the tongue now if you look at this diagram which you now have it on a slide you find that it has two tongues localized in it one goes this way and the other goes this way so you have a horizontal as well as a vertical placement of tongues now according to the height of the tongue you have closed vowels you have half closed you have half open and you have open when you mark closed vowels you find that your two jaws are together there is very little or maybe no gap between the two jaws and as you move towards half close there is fair amount of opening between the two jaws but when you come to half open there is more opening when you reach the open you find that your jaws are wide apart so you have close half close half open and open coming to the next you have part of the tongue 
those which are marked on the first line they are called front vowels then those are articulated by the body of the tongue they are called the central and those which are articulated by the back part of the tongue the part which is a uh, parallel to your soft palate which is also called velum you have back vowels so you have front central and back now coming to the shape of the lips you find that the lips are put to shape or they are made to stand neutral when the sounds are articulated so the lips may be rounded or unrounded when you have unrounded you have spread vowels you have neutral vowels but when they are rounded you have open lip rounding and closed lip rounding so let us see the entire classification we begin with vowel number 1 the sound is e as you have it in words like eat meet and free eat you have e sound at the initial position meet you have the sound in the medial position and free at the close of the word so when you pronounce e you find that your lips are spread your jaws are very close to each other there is very little opening hence you have e as a nearly close vowel front and at the same time an unrounded but spread vowel coming to the second one it is e which is a shorter sound compared to the first one you have it in words like in with the sound that occurs in the initial position you have it in sit and finally you have in the close of the word in the word city here you find that this is articulated by the back of the front of the tongue when i say front of the tongue i mean the tip or the blade here you find that the height of the tongue is nearly half close that means there is some amount of opening between the two jaws and like the first one it is unrounded and therefore spread in nature so now i compare the first one with the second one by showing you the pronunciation e e coming to the third one that is a you have it in engine you have it in uh, egg you have it in bed you have it in envelope so this stands midway between half open and half close and at the same time this is a front vowel that means it is articulated by the front part of the tongue and you also find that this is unrounded again the lips are spread this time the spreading goes this way so you have a as i already gave you the examples for example engine you have an estimate you have it in egg or ent words like bet this is comparatively a difficult sound for the indian english speakers now let me show you the pronunciation right from number 1 to number 3 number 1 is e then you have e e and here comes your a this sound you find the fourth vowel is more closer to open position it stands midway between half open and uh, open and it is also a front vowel and an unrounded as far as the uh, shape of the lips is concerned and the lips are spread during the process of articulation here you have it in words like uh, add as medial position you have bad lad and this is not available in the final position so let me show you 
how we go right from the first to the fourth one you have e e e e e and the fifth one is a mind you right from the as we travel from the first vowel to the fifth one the jaws are now wide open which was earlier almost closed when we started with the first one so a is open more closer to back and at the same time it is again unrounded but spread vowel you have it in words like art arm heart bad and the final position you have ka where you find that r stands for mute sound coming to the sixth one that is o o i repeat again uh, you have it in words like uh, for example ot the pot bot cot and uh, this is a back vowel very close to open position and is a rounded vowel this is something which has to be kept in mind to remind you vowels from 1 to 5 they were unrounded but spread in nature the lips were spread this way or this way but here you find that you have open lip rounding vowels number 6 and 7 are example of open lip rounding whereas 8 and 9 are example of closed lip rounding so here the lips are loosely rounded but in its counterpart that is o as you have it in words like uh, or office or uh, in words like horse for here you find uh, that uh, this sound is also back stands midway between open and half open and is the example of open lip rounding so this is vowel number 7 coming to vowel number 8 which is u you have it in words like uh, book shook could would this sound is very close to half close position it is also back and is an example of close lip rounding here the two lips are protruded in the form of whistling and uh, the sound is comparatively shorter because it does not have the length mark students here i would like to point this out to you that whenever you have a vowel sound with a length mark you should give it longer duration of articulation because it's a long sound so in vowel number 9 you have it in sounds like uh, oos then uh, medial position you have it in brook final position you have it in word like shoe this is also back at the same time you also know that this is close lip rounding vowel but very close to close position so let me show you what is the position of the oral cavity as we move from vowel number 1 to vowel number 9 e e e e a o o see we have come full circle from vowel number 1 we started at a nearly close position and by the time we reach at vowel number 9 you find that it is again 
the same position with the only difference that you have closed lip rounding of the vowels. Coming to vowel number 10, which is a central vowel, you have it in words like up, some, sun. You don't have it in the final position, that is, no word ends in this vowel sound. So, this is central because it is produced by the main body of the tongue. It is nearly half open and at the same time you find that this is unrounded and a neutral one. That means there is a shape change in the case of the lips. The lips remain neutral, undisturbed. Coming to vowel number 11 which is a long sound. You have it in words like earth, earn, earl and medial position you have it in words like birth, hurt, curd. Final position you have it in word like her. In this case again you find that it stands midway between half open and uh, half close and uh, a central vowel and an example of neutral vowel because the lips are undisturbed or unperturbed they are not put into any shape coming to the last one which is called neutral vowel you have it in uh, words like for example a go a jile above and a word like seven final position you have it in the the where you find that the sound dies up. Or for example, where R remains silent, you have this neutral one. This again is very close to half open position. It is again unrounded, but a neutral vowel. And above all, you find that this is a central vowel. So again, I show you how these 12 vowels are produced. What is the shape of the oral cavity? And I hope that in case you watch me very carefully, you will be able to locate these sounds correctly during your pronunciation. So I begin with vowel number 1 and move on to vowel number 12. E, 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 A, O, O, U, 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 U. Thank you students for listening to me attentively and I hope that this is of use to you. Thank you.